I'd like to welcome everybody. You've logged into this latest installment of Zoom with ZOA. Jews making wine since biblical times in Judea and Samaria, featuring Amichai Luria from the Shiloh Winery and featuring Noah from Psagot Winery, both in Judea and Samaria. Today's event will be moderated by our Israel representative in Israel, Dan Aluz. Please leave all microphones on mute for the duration of the program. If we have time for Q&A, please post questions in the chat. We'll pick up your questions there. And uh, we're looking forward to a, to a really wonderful program. My name is Alan Jay. I'm the Acting National Director of Outreach and Engagement here at ZOA. I'd like to welcome you and let you know that we at ZOA hope and pray that all on this call here in the United States and in Israel uh, are and remain safe and healthy. And on behalf of everyone here at ZOA, We'd like to wish you all Shana Tova Mutuka. May you all be blessed with health and prosperity in the coming new year. Uh, before we start, I just want to give a special shout out to my cousin Matanya for helping to arrange this webinar. Matanya is so proud to be working at the award-winning winery of Shiloh. He introduced me to one of our guests, Amichai, and you'll be introduced to Amichai very shortly. Since the pandemic began, we at ZOA realized that we needed to keep our membership engaged and informed, and we've offered more than 60 uh, ZOA webinars and uh, ZOA book club meetings. Our webinars have featured <clears throat> members of U.S. Congress, Israeli ambassadors, MK members, renowned authors, and other influencers in the field of Zionism and Jewish advocacy, both here and in the United, in the United States and in Israel. And we have a full schedule of upcoming programming, so please consult your emails. Go to our website, zoa.org. We have uh, links to upcoming webinars, and you can also view uh, all of our recorded webinars by clicking on our YouTube channel. Uh, ZOA has been a leader in pro-Israel and pro-Jewish advocacy since 1897 through our Center for Law and Justice, our Department for Government Relations. We're on 100 U.S. university campuses or more and we have regional campuses around the world. ZOA shares the history, facts, and truth that clearly demonstrate Israel's right to be and remain a sovereign Jewish state, including Judea and Samaria and the Jordan Valley, with Jerusalem as her undivided capital and with the right to defend herself if and whenever necessary. Uh, Dan Luz is ZOA's representative in Israel. Dan is originally from Montreal, Canada. He moved to Israel after finishing his legal studies at McGill University, a great university in Canada, and specializing in international law. Dan serves as an international law advisor on the reserve duty. Dan worked in the International Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs as a legislative advisor to the Likud and the Knesset, as well as in senior management positions in Israel's third sector. Here to introduce our speakers and to moderate today's event, I'm turning the program over to Dan Luz, my friend and colleague. Thank you so much, Alan, and hello, everyone. Uh, as Ali mentioned, my name is Daniel Luz, and I am ZOA's representative here in Israel. Our work here in Israel is critical in showing to Israeli policymakers uh, that there is a strong, unapologetic Zionist organization in America. Unfortunately, in the past few years, we hear in Israel the loud voices of a few post-Zionist Jews in America that make a lot of noise. Israeli policymakers then often take into consideration these voices when advancing policies in order to ensure not to hurt Israeli diaspora uh, relations. The fact that there is an organization like ZOA, which is unapologetic and very Zionist, is very important so that Israeli policymakers know that there is a large community that does support Israel's rights and that they can make the right policy decisions without fearing uh, this type of conflict. In the past few months, we have focused our uh, activities on the rights of Israel to Judea and Samaria. Judea and Samaria is a central part of the historical homeland of the Jewish people and belongs to Israel not only based on international law, but also because of our historical rights. Wine is a powerful symbol for this fact. 2,000 years ago, Israel was a wine powerhouse, even exporting some wine to surrounding countries in a time where international trade wasn't something so common. In these very hills of Judea and Samaria that we're going to visit today, there were Jewish wineries that made some of the world's best wine. 
After the Muslim conquest of Israel, wineries were replaced by olive oil factories because Muslims don't drink alcoholic beverages, including wine. When the Jews started coming back to Israel, one of the first things they did was produce wine. After Israel reached statehood, the wine industry in Israel continued growing. And after the Six Day War, when Judea, when Judea and Samaria was liberated from Jordanian rule, the wineries in, this, in these areas also started to thrive. Today, they constantly win international prizes as some of the world's best wineries. And so wine is a powerful symbol of Jewish sovereignty and of our historical rights to the land, something that was around 2000 years ago that stopped after the foreign conquests of the land and came back once the Jews returned to their ancestral homeland. Today, we are pleased to host two wineries that make incredible wine in Judea and Samaria. And as someone who is a wine lover, I can tell you that these are two of my favorite wineries in Israel. As the holidays are approaching, we thought it was a good time to feature them so that you can consider them when shopping for your holiday wine and support some of the businesses in Judea and Samaria. They each have a fascinating story to tell, and we are happy to host them to hear that story. We will start with a presentation from Amichai Luri from Shiloh Wineries, and then we will move on to Noah, who will present Sagot Wineries. So before we get to Amichai, we'll see a short video presentation uh, of the winery. Uh, Jackie, if you can put the first video. This is one of the most ancient wine territories on the planet. Now, I'm not in France, I'm not in Spain, and I'm not even in Italy. I'm in the Sumerian hills of Judea and Samaria. Welcome to Shiloh. The biblical city that preceded Jerusalem is the central worship site of the early Israelites. Over 3,000 years ago, Shiloh was the first capital of the Israelite kingdom. And today it's home to the Shiloh Winery, a boutique winery that produces some of Israel's most internationally recognized kosher wines. This is Amichai Luria, and he's the chief winemaker at Shiloh. This is a Merlot, Petit Syrah, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc. The whole area, all these vineyards around us, we have lots and lots of ancient wine presses that date back thousands of years. King David, Yoshua Binun, this is where they walked, this is where they lived, this is where they made wine. They'd bring the grapes here, step on it, put it into the hole over there, it would ferment, mm -hmm. and you'd have wine. When King David said, wine gladdens the heart, he was talking about wine that was made here, in this area. After 2,000 years in exile, finally we're back to where everything started. And then there is light. Wow. You can see how deep we are underground if you just look up at the ceiling here. It's amazing. So we're drinking a Shiloh 2019 rosé in a cave where they used to age wine 3,000 3, years ago. Lechaim. Lechaim. In the Sumerian hills, you have cold nights, you have warm days, and what does that do for the grapes? The grapes mature slowly, and the slower they mature, the better they get. We actually collect all the waste from the chickens, from the uh, goats, from the sheep, and we use everything to make our own organic compost. So this is a Cabernet Sauvignon that I separated the men from the boys, so to speak, different barrels, right. and picked the best ones to make this specific wine. Okay. And this is the base of the Cabernet Secret Reserve, which is our best seller. But you wouldn't, you wouldn't serve this to the public yet. It's not ready. No, no. At least it needs at least another year in barrels. And also during that year, I'm going to be deciding which barrels We'll oh, I love this. I feel like I'm ready yeah. to take this home. Amichai has taken me to his house to feast on a local lamb. So the one thing that you have to be careful about if you come to the Shiloh winery is how much you drink, right? How much you drink and how yeah. much you eat. 
And how much you eat. We try to do a different kind of tour mm -hmm. uh, to be unique, to give a different kind of experience. How long has this been cooking for? I don't know. I think I left to the vineyards at around 5 o'clock in the morning, so it's since 5 already in the grill. No grill. big deal. Yeah. No big deal. Sometimes it'll be longer. We'll see how that falls off through the bone. Oh. It's an amazing privilege to work the land of Israel. It's an amazing privilege to plant the vine and knowing that prophecies are coming true. And when you respect the vines themselves, then you get back. It's a spiritual connection of a person that makes wine to the land itself, to the vines. So thank you, Jackie, and uh, Amicha, we would be happy to start hearing about the Shiloh Winery and from you. Actually, this video was taken a couple of months ago. By now, already some of those vineyards that we saw in the video clip are already fully grown and we already harvested. And actually, last night, I also harvested one of those vineyards. So Motzei Shabbat, Saturday night, uh, right after Shabbat, I was already in the vineyards and I was harvesting all night. And uh, the grapes are now in the tank already. And uh, the magic of wine is happening. This is where everything starts. I would like to, I think uh, the video clip basically did the job for me, you know. <laughs> it explains a little bit about me. About the, about the wine making in the, in the winery and why we're here and what we're doing. And uh, maybe I would like to encourage people, first of all, to come and visit, come and see what happens in the winery, come to the vineyards themselves and feel what it means to plant your own vineyard or plant your own vine. You don't have to plant the whole vineyard, right? Plant the vine and see how it grows and see what happens. And it's an it's amazing feeling. It's almost like uh, seeing your children grow up or your grandchildren. And it's an amazing connection when you do something that you know that your ancestors have been doing for thousands of years and you have that unique privilege to do the same thing and be part of that. And I encourage everybody, you know, it's the easiest thing in the world. All you have to come, come and do it. Uh, we make at Chilo Winery over 200,000 bottles a year. We've been growing slowly every year, but because there's high demand for our wines, so every year we try and increase production. We do it a little slowly because we don't want to grow too fast because it's very important for me as a winemaker to be hands-on. Everything that happens in the winery, I have to be at every harvest when we harvest the grapes, I have to be in the winery when we're making the wine. I have to stand on top of every tank and I have to taste every single barrel. And uh, the, amazing, uh, the amazing magic of blending different barrels and different wines to make an amazing wine. And it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun and it's very hard and it's very challenging. But uh, thank God it's very rewarding. It's something that you, you see and you can enjoy what you make with your own hands is, is amazing. Um, now we're in the middle of uh, the most difficult uh, stage or season of the year, which is harvest. It started a couple of weeks ago and it's gonna end in a couple of weeks. And literally we're working 24 hours a day. I leave right after Shabbat is out and I'm usually back a little bit before the next Shabbat comes in. And uh, it's amazing time to see the grapes uh, mature and you taste them in the field and then you taste it while the wine is being made. And then you taste the wine on Shabbat when you're home. And it's a lot of fun. What else? I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> Dan, you're muted. 
Hi, I'm Michai. Could you maybe let us know a little bit of the history of the Shiloh Winery? How long has it been around? Uh, what type of wines you do? Okay. So Shiloh is Shiloh winer, Winery is located in the ancient town of Shiloh. Shiloh was basically the capital of Israel before King David, before Jerusalem for 369 years. When B'nai Israel, when we came in finally after we were in Egypt and we were in the desert for 40 years, we entered Eretz Israel. And this is where everything started. Everything started in Shiloh. It was the capital was there. From there, we conquered slowly the whole country. And this is where everything started. So it's almost like the whole, the whole circle comes together. This is where everything started. And now when we start all over again, after 2000 years in exile, we're starting exactly in the same place where everything started. We produce over 200,000 bottles a year of high-end quality wine. Uh, our wines have won many, many awards from wine, best the best wine critics all over the world, from wine enthusiasts, wine spectator, wine advocate, has been giving us these amazing scores, 90s and above. And uh, in the Israeli Golden Cluster competition, year after year, uh, we win gold medals, the best, uh, this year, the best Petit Verdot in Israel, the best Merlot in Israel, the, one of the best blends in Israel. And it's, uh, I encourage you, come taste it. You'll see that uh, when you respect the land, then the land gives everything back to you. Uh, before we get to some of the questions from the people in the chat, and I'm uh, encouraging people to write questions if they have any questions. Uh, I have one more question. Maybe you can talk to us a little bit about the challenges of running a business uh, in Judea and Samaria. So first of all, I want to say I'm not complaining. I welcome the challenge. Every, no matter what you do, there's a challenge in life. And uh, the advantage is that the, this kind of challenge of working in such a complex business because it first of all starts with the agriculture and everybody knows that agriculture is very challenging because you know all you need is the weather to change like we just had a crazy heat wave it was very challenging in the fields and anything that has to do with agriculture is very challenging but we love the challenge because this is what we were meant to do and uh so it's hard to get good labor to work in the vineyards because it's very, very hard work. And I don't have to tell you how hot an Israel, Israel is as a country and working outside in, these ter in, these, in the heat is not very easy. That's why I also work all night because I want to use the night, the night hours, which are a little bit easier to work in. And uh, In the, in the winery itself, uh, making wine is very different because every month of the year, we're doing something else. Things change all the time. And uh, it's a lot of fun on one hand, but it's very hard on the other. And uh, I do believe that since uh, the land, when you respect the land and you're blessed with good fruit, then everything else is so much easier. Um, I would say doing things in Israel, there's always the big problem of people boy boycotting you, etc. But uh, for us, it's very important and we're very proud of where we are and where we came from. So no matter what, all our wines will say also in Hebrew, also the wine that goes into any country around the world, It'll say in Hebrew, Shiloh, because we're proud of where we came from. Every bottle says produced in Shiloh Winery, Israel, because we're proud of where we came from and we're proud of what we're doing. And if people don't want to buy it because of where it comes from, like we say in Yiddish, let them be. <laughs> but uh, we, we believe in what we're doing and we're going to continue doing what, you, what we're doing.
So although things are tough, like uh, Kennedy said, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And believe me, we're very tough and we love the challenge and uh, we're here to stay. Okay, one of the questions that's uh, coming up over and over again in the chat is to try and understand how they can get some of this amazing wine in the, in the United States. So, uh, well, first of all, at the beginning of the chat here, I think one of the first messages, I put all the ways to contact me personally. Well, I'm the winemaker. Here, the ja winery. Jackie just posted that again. Just so okay, so you can, you can feel free. There's my phone number, my email. You can contact me through Facebook, through Instagram, through LinkedIn. We have an online catalog. Any way you want, it's very easy to contact me or contact the winery. Chilo wines are sold all over the United States, even nationwide in a lot of uh, Total Wine uh, stores. There are hundreds of them all over the United States. In a lot of them we are, and every year we're, we enter more and more of those. You can get it in most wine stores in uh, New York, New Jersey, Florida, and California. Most of those states, and in Illinois, most of the wine stores in those states, you can get Chilo wines. Online, it's also very easy. You can either buy online on a lot of, uh, a lot of wine sites uh, that sell wine and they distribute all over the United States. And also through our website, you can buy uh, wine. We distribute to everywhere in the United States. It doesn't matter, even if it's in a small town in the middle of nowhere, the wine will get there. Great, and maybe you can uh, speak a little bit about the type of wines. I had a, there was a question there in the chat uh, about uh, whether you only do European, uh, I don't even know how you say it in the English, but you'll understand Zanim if you only do European varieties. or if there's also some local uh, varieties. So we make a lot of different kinds of uh, wines and uh, the easiest way to see it, if you go into the chat here and you see our catalog, then you'll see all the different wines that we have. Also on our website, you can see all the different wines that we have. But uh, I'll start from the top. We have our, the flagship wine of the winery is called the Mosaic. I don't have all the wines in front of me. This is an ancient mosaic that was found uh, here in Shiloh in one of the archaeology uh, digs that we're here now. It's one of, one of our best sellers, the mosaic. Uh, it's a blend of Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdun, Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, we have the Secret Reserve series. It's called Secret Reserve, not Reserve, Secret, because Secret in Hebrew is Sod. And the gematria, when you change the letters into numbers, sod and wine is they're both 70. 70 symbol is, means a lot in Judaism, right? And uh, in that secret reserve, we have six different kinds of wines. They're all variety, uh, single varietal wines. There's a Cabernet Sauvignon. There's a Merlot, just won the gold medal, the best Merlot in Israel. Petit Verdot, Best Petit Verdot in Israel, Petit Syrah, uh, Cabernet Franc and Shiraz. Uh, we have another series, it's called The Legend. Legend Fiddler and Legend Choni. When uh, there was just now the uh, competition in Israel of uh, uh, best wines in different categories, in the category of blends, the legends, we have two different wines, so Legend Choni won the gold medal, the best one in Israel, and Legend Fiddler got number two. So we were first prize and second prize at the same time. And, uh, and we have a lot of other wine wines. I encourage you to look it up and uh, don't, don't hesitate. If you have any questions, you can call me personally. I'm available to everybody. So be, and before be, crazy times, I'm available also sometimes in the middle of the night. <laughs> so before our last question, I just want to tell everyone that I personally recommend two wines. Uh, the Legends are amazing. And also I personally love the Barbera uh, that you right. do, which is a very special variety that there aren't a lot of kosher wines from the Barbera variety. And it's a really, really, really good one. I wine. just harvested it uh, this, uh, tonight. The Barbera. 
We just harvested. I came back from the harvest to, to do the Zoom meeting. <laughs> I don't know if you, have, you can see it, but my hands are still black a little bit. No matter how much I scrub them, they're still black from the, from the grapes. So the final question, uh, how important, this is part of a, a sovereignty series that we do here at ZOA. So the question has to do with that. How important is Israel extending sovereignty to Jewish owned businesses in Judea and Samaria? Well, I, I, might, I, I might answer this in an unconventional way. To me, sovereignty is doing what I'm doing. When you work in this area, when you grow your vineyards in this area, when unfortunately you bury your loved ones here, that's sovereignty. That means you show it with your actions. Politics and all that is very important. Do it, push it. I'll let you do the hard work. I'll let you do that, that heavy lifting. I'll do my part, my heavy lifting. My part is showing with my actions that this is my land. Now, presidents come and go and leaders come and go. And you know, we've also seen big nations come and go. We're here to stay. So I, am, I encourage and I'm very happy that everybody works and pushes and helps us with the politics of making these things better. And it's very, very important. I'll do my part by doing the hard work and uh, with my actions, planting another vine, having another child get married, living here and having their children here. That's my sovereignty. That's what I do. That's my part. And the rest, there, everybody has to do what he's good at. That's what I'm good at. And that's what I'm doing with all my heart and my children with me and my grandchildren now also. That's, that's our part. And I'll leave the rest to you. That's very powerful words to end with. Thank you so much, Amichai. Uh, we know you have to run to another event. So thank you very much for taking the time to be here. And we're going to move on to the next video that will introduce the Psagot Winery. One second, is... I have one more thing to say. Okay. The next winery that you're going to watch is Sagot Winery. Sagot Winery, they're about 20 minute drive away from me. They're an amazing winery. They also found there an amazing cave. They found a coin. You have to listen to it, to what Noah is going to tell you now. It's one of my favorite wineries in Israel, literally. And when you come visit Shiloh, you have to come visit Sagot Winery because believe me, that's a place you want to go to. It's a must. Like you go to Kotel Amaravi, you go to the Dead Sea, you have to also go to Sagot Winery. You see, this is how businesses do competition in Judea and Samaria. They help each other in order to grow together. Thank you very much. Any Anika. way we can, believe me, any way we can. Lechaim. Lechaim. and Shana Tova. Jackie, if you can put the video. Seventeen years ago, Yaakov Berg and his wife Naama stumbled upon something unbelievable. A 2,500-year-old cave, dating back to the time of the great Jewish revolt against the Romans. We've been arriving, then we felt something strange other than the of our car, and we found the ancient cave. The cave was full with mud almost to the top, so we need to dig. And in this very cave, they uncovered something even more astonishing, an ancient gold coin from 67 CE, when the land of Israel was under Roman rule. The Jews tried to kick them out, to fight for their freedom. And you can see on one side of the coin, it's amphora, it's a wine bottle. On the other side, it's a wine leaf, and it's written here for, in ancient Hebrew, for the freedom of Zion so crazy is that you were already in the process of building your own winery here and then you find this coin that basically says your ancestors were doing exactly the same thing 2,000 years ago. After we found the cave we understood this is our legacy. 
This cave has become home to one of Israel's most famous wineries, Sagot, which was chosen as Israel's top wine producer in 2018. This is just part of the Psagot vineyards. They're located in the chalky terraces of the Binyamin region in Judea and Samaria. Every single bottle of Psagot wine is imprinted with an exact replica of the coin that Yaakov and Nama found. Today, we're producing more than 300,000 bottles. About 70% of our production go to export. It's maybe the biggest in Israel. So the majority of what we're seeing here right now is actually going to be consumed abroad, yes, yes, straight yes, from exactly. Judea and Samaria. If you really want to taste Israel, if you want to taste Judea and Samaria, you want to taste the land, that's the way to do it. So if you can take a look, this is that stone. This is the ancient wine press. You can see a hole just here on the floor. Right. There is one hole here and one hole here. They lift up the stone. I can show you the stone. Yeah. It's put a weight here and all the wine used to go down here. Here you can, about 200 liters, can stay there and... and uh, ferment. Ferment, exactly. Today, tourists from around the world come to Psagot to see the historical landscape, take part in guided tours, and of course, drink some very fine wine. And the best part is that it's just a 15-minute drive from Jerusalem. Well, we're just standing. It's Psagot's newest winery. It's going to be ready in two weeks. You built it purposely with the idea of having this view, right, of the Jerusalem hills behind you. Yes. Why is that the case? Listen, Natasha, most of the Bible stories happened around us, really here long before Jerusalem was existing. Stories about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, our forefathers. From here you can see the Jordan Valley, you can see the Dead Sea. Used to be the beginning, the house of King Saul, our first king. And a lot of the stories about King Saul happened here. So as you're going to be drinking your wine from this very area, you're going to be able to have a view straight into the history of Israel, basically. Yes, yes. This is the heart, the heart of the land of Israel. For 2,000 years, that land was a desert. Nothing was growing here. Everybody tried, right. nobody succeeded. We believe that part of the miracle of Israel, it's not just that we, the Jewish people, came back to our homeland. Right. Also, the land came back to us. And I think this is what wine represents, what vines represent. The story of Psagot is the story of the Jewish people. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, we would love to hear from Noah uh, from... Uh, Hi, everybody. Support. Hello, hello, and welcome. Really pleasure to see you, like, over the internet here from Sagot Winery. This is our new venue at the new movie. You saw how it was almost ready, and now we opened our new venue on mid-June, a little bit later than we thought because of COVID-19. But here we are, and now we're going to enter. The wedding is almost going to start, but I'm going to put you in and show you everything. But before we do that, I'm going to so show you the sign that we have at the entrance to the winery. Wait a second. Here you go. You see this? It's from Amos at the Bible. V'shavti et shvut ami, v'banu arim, v'yashvu, v'natu kamim, v'shatu et yinam, which basically means that the Lord will return us to the country and we will be building cities and villages and we will plant vineyards, we'll drink wine and we will not be deserted anymore. And this is, I guess, is our promise from Hashem that we are here to stay like Amichai started to say. So we're going to start the tour. I'm going to put you in and show you this is the entrance to the winery, to the new winery. And you will see that as we enter, beautiful place. And here we have a little bit noise because the music of the world did. But here at the museum, how people used to make wine and how they used to reserve the wine in the land, a very nice uh, place. Also, um, 
preservant like olive oil, some baking dishes that we have actually borrowed from different periods of time from a lot of um, museum around Chevron and around Chem and because what our story of Sagot winery, like we always say, is the story of the Jewish nation. We actually lean on the history, on the back, on our fathers, and we take what the land, the Lord, has been given us and trying to make good out of it and to showcase it to the world as the best thing of Israel. So here we are again, I'll show you. This is the new location of Sagot Winery. We have here almost every day um, a wedding, even though it's COVID-19 and we have a lot of regulations and challenges and difficulties, we are here and we are trying to do the best of what we've got. And I'm gonna show you now, this is where weddings and this is where the chupa is taking place. We go a little further to a beautiful um, view of Benjamin region, like you saw in the beginning of the movie, this place is where a lot of Bible stories took place. Specifically what you see now in front of me is this village, Arab village, is called Muhmus, and it's looking over the Mihmas River. I don't know if you could see it from here, from this point of view which this direction at almost sunset is towards the Yama Melach, the Dead Sea area, the Jordan area. So we know that at like almost um, this place, Muhmus, is also a place that was known in the Bible. In the book of Shmuel, chapter 14, there's a story that's called Sene and Botzet about King Saul they were sitting actually up north behind this side of the winery with a couple hundred soldiers. And actually, at where the top of this mountain, where you see all this Arab village, there were almost a hundred thousand um, soldiers of the Philistines, Philistines. And there were actually, they wanted to conquer where King Saul was and to kill everybody. And King Saul was very, very scared and was scared that he was going to be left with no people because they were scared and left him. And the miracle that was happening actually here at this place is unbelievable because King Saul's son, Jonathan, he was very smart, bold, and brave. He took his army or friend, and without telling nobody, they were coming at dawn in between these rocks and climbing to behind the mountain to attack the Philistines where probably they didn't think nobody will come from that area. And to make long story short, this is how they conquered the war and they won and they started um, a new legacy of, of King Saul. So we are actually here. We are standing where history was made and the land is all, a lot of stories. The root, that I know, is called the 60 root, which is also called the Patriarch's root, because it starts before Be'er Sheva, the south part of Israel, and continues to Hebron, to Yerushalayim, here, where a lot of Bible stories took place, from here to Shiloh, to Shechem, to Bethel, all the stories about Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov were happening actually on this specific road. And as you see, the winery is, was built with a lot of thinking behind it. We are, I'm sorry that I'm turning the camera because I want you to see the structure. The structure of the winery is in a, in a shape of an ancient inn. This is how they used to build at the second temple time when the jews came from exact especially shiloh towards jerusalem at the holidays with all their families and herds and camels they used to come here they used to build places where you can put all the herd in the middle and sleep on the side this is a very welcoming warm 
and protecting the uh, building. And we wanted to preserve the way it was built with a very, very um, upcoming um, technology and designing. And I will show you a little bit. This is the part, one side of the, of the winery, where all the winemaking take place. We cannot enter it because of, uh, as far as the kashrut supervision, we're not allowed in. And we're gonna enter very shortly now to the other part where we have the visiting center and wedding hall and venue. One second. All right. So, as you could see, I'm gonna show you around. Sagat so Winery started, as you saw in the clip and movie with Yako, at 2003, 17 years ago with a very humble produce of 3,000 bottles that started as a hobby of Yakov and Ama, which were very young students at that time. And they just wanted to see how it works. It came out amazing. And they had in their mind an idea to make it a, a winery. And I'm gonna switch the camera now again. And as of now, it's a good winery 17 years ago, seven, Hi, uh, okay, everyone, sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, there seems to be a problem with the connection Sagot, which uh, basically tells us how much uh, we need sovereignty, I think, in this area to have a good uh, quality connection. So that's one of the things that would be, uh, that would be solved if that happened. Uh, but uh, I hope you all heard a little bit about uh, the Psagot winery. I can tell you that what she, uh, Noah started showing is the different medals that Psagot uh, really got. They're an award-winning uh, winery, uh, just like Shiloh. Uh, and their wine is also available in the United States. Uh, we'll put a link uh, soon on, uh, in the chat uh, with, uh, with some information of where you can get it. Hi, I'm here again. Hi, Noah. Noah? Dan, maybe we play that video link that we were discussing and give Noah a chance to come to a point where she can be heard again. Uh, Jackie, do you want to put the video? Great. And just explain what it is, Dan, for one minute, okay? It's a video that's uh, going to describe the bottling process uh, of one of the wines that Amichai actually uh, discussed in the Shiloh winery. Uh, so uh, we'll, put, we'll play it right now. The magic of blending can be seen best in Legend Fiddler. You can't imagine how much work goes into a bottle of wine. It starts with months of work in the vineyards and then almost a year and a half and sometimes more at the winery. After working so long on making such an amazing wine, you want to bottle it perfectly. You have to let it age a little bit, and then you can fully appreciate this amazing blend, Legend Fiddler. So I suggest that we take some questions and answers uh, for you. Uh, and now that we've seen the, unless there's something, uh, one last thing that you want to show us. Yes. Okay. Sure. I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you the coin, the genuine coin that we have that Yaakov found in the cave. That we have a replica on um, all of our red bottles, and it's a very interesting. It's a very small coin, but it's a very touching 
to see that this coin is more. I'm going to show you one second. More than two, and it sh it says shows you an amphora. One second. One second. Okay, I don't know if you can see it clearly. Uh, so this is one of the coins that was uh, seen. This is a genuine was, coin. The, the original coin that was found in and the case that we saw in the video. this is here with a wine leaf. Yeah, and it says here to the freedom of Zion. And on the other side, there's an image of Amphora and with the date, the second year to the great revolution of all time. And this is a very, very touching um, thing that Yaakov and Emma found. And once they found it, and they thought they were looking for a place to store their wine, but they understood that this is something larger. This is something from the bigger picture. And they're not starting any new winery. They're not continuing their hobby. They're one little chain in a very long legacy of Jews making premium wine from this area in Binyamin. And this is no longer just a challenge. This is a mission that we have to take upon ourselves. And now that we have wine that is good, that is being rewarded and appreciated all over the world. And you know, Israel is a very, very small dot on the globe. So even regardless of being kosher and premium wine, people recognize that something is interesting, something very, um, worth rewarding is happening here from Benjamin region. So we feel that we're doing our part. And if you have, I'm going to show you a little bit of more of our wines very closely and I can explain you more, but please, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. So I, I actually think that we're almost out of time. So if there are any last questions, uh, maybe quickly. I see one question. Someone is asking, Miriam is asking, what makes wine kosher? If you can quickly explain that. Uh, Sorry, we'll what did you ask? What makes wine kosher? The thing is like this. Once the grapes are on the, on the tree and they're not being crushed, not becoming liquid, it doesn't matter who is making it and who's touching it. But once the grapes get into the winery, and we are pressing it and we're putting it into, uh, turning it into liquid. This is where only Jews the wine. Only Shomer Shabbat can touch the wine. So this is one thing. And of course, there are the mitzvot of the, of the land, which uh, all this mitzvot that are really regarded to the land of Israel. And there's another spectrum of kosher wine, which is called Mavushal wine. No, no, this is Alan, wine. Noah, can I just interrupt you for a minute? Yes. If, if you could just stay right where you are, we're hearing your voice well, right there. And when you're walking, we're losing you. So can I just ask you to answer the question from where you are now? I'm sorry. Okay, I'm gonna, all right. Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, I'm here. I'm not gonna move. So where did you stop hearing me? Uh, after the great, you, you were talking about Kashrut. You, you were talking about the, yes. the so uh, laws of the land. Grapes, right. So once the grapes get here, only Jews can touch the wine. And after the wine is being made, also only Shomer Shabbat can touch all the equipment, even the stainless steel vat, the barrels. And this makes what makes wine kosher. And there's another aspect of kosher wine, which is called the mevushal wine, that according to the Jewish law, that once the wine is, the wine is made, only Jew and Shomer Shabbat can pour it to others. If the wine is not mevushal and non-Jew has touched the wine or has poured it, it's, it's not, it, it really ruins the kashrut of the wine. So if you, the wine is mevushal, meaning it was, um, pasteurized in a specific and a certain degree of heat. The wine is so-called a little bit damaged, so it doesn't call wine, it's called Mavusha wine. This is how a non-Jew can touch it 
let's say if you're in a wedding and there's a waiter that is not Jew, so he can pour it to you, or someone um, that actually, this is actually basically it. Great, Noah, one last question. We don't have a lot of time, so if you can quickly answer. Uh, how do you protect the winery? Uh, is the security a problem? Um, listen, we are here, and like Amichai said, we are here to stay. It's a very, very interesting and beautiful area, but it's beyond the green uh, line. We don't feel any danger. We don't have special security, but even you should know if someone comes here to a wedding and there's a uh, not COVID-19 wedding, like regular wedding, because we can have here up to 600 people. So we do have guards and we do can, we can order, we can um, uh, call security, but we are here like living and functioning like regular, regular people in, in other areas in Israel. No fear, no hesitation, and I welcome you. Whenever you're in Israel, you should come here. We have here tours, we have here weddings, we have here a lot of sessions of very special wine tasting, uh, professional ones, and we can have here convention and small wedding. It's a beautiful place with a great atmosphere, an amazing wine and beautiful view. And we welcome you whenever you're in Israel, come visit us. There's also a wine store here that we sell all of our wines and we'll be very, very happy to host you here. Thank you so much, Noah. Noah again from Sagot Winery. And thank you, Amichai, who was uh, here beforehand from the Shiloh Winery. And I want to also yes. thank all of you uh, for coming uh, today and for listening uh, and for taking part in this uh, webinar. Thank you also for bearing with the imperfect sound uh, owning to the live tour. Uh, and uh, I just want to speak a little bit about the programs that we have coming up at ZOA. Uh, on Tuesday, September 15th at 7 p.m., we will have a fascinating Zoom discussion uh, with uh, Dr. Mordechai Kedar, who's the director of the Center for the Study of the Middle East and Islam. Can you hear me, Dan? At that Center uh, of the Strategic Studies. Uh, the, the talk will be about what the Arab world is saying about the Israel-UAE deal and the Lebanon explosion. And it will be moderated by Kobe Erez, the ZOA Michigan Executive Director, that's September 15th at 7 p.m. And then on Wednesday, September 16th at 1 p.m., uh, we will have a Zoom uh, ZOA book club meeting uh, with, where we will uh, present Shattered Lives Overcoming the Fruence Tavern Terror, featuring Jeff Ingber and Joe Connor, the authors, uh, and will be moderated by Liz Burney, the ZOA Director of Special Projects. Uh, this again is Wednesday, September 16th at 1 p.m. As you know, uh, ZOA has been doing a lot of these, uh, of these uh, Zoom webinars, and so if you enjoy them, I want to encourage you to support ZOA's work. Uh, important work, as we said in the beginning, ZOA's work is very important, both in Israel and in America. If you want to support ZOA's work, you can go on zoa.org and you'll get all the information about how to donate. Thanks again for taking part in this webinar. I hope you had a good uh, time. And Shana Tova, and as we said, Lechaim also for drinking some wine.